As you well know, the holidays are upon us, and that means it's time for us to talk about some great gadgets and gizmos that would make great gifts here on iOS Today. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is iOS Today, episode 632, recorded Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. Rosemary and Micah's Holiday Gift Guide. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Bitwarden. Get the password manager that offers a robust and cost-effective solution that can drastically increase your chances of staying safe online. Get started with a free trial of a Teams or Enterprise plan, or get started for free across all devices as an individual user at bitwarden.com slash twit. And by 8sleep. Go to 8sleep.com slash iOS for exclusive holiday savings and ring in the most wonderful time of night. If you're listening after December 31st, use the same URL, 8sleep.com slash iOS, to check out the pod and save $150 at checkout with our normal offer. Welcome back to iOS Today, the show where we talk all things iOS, tvOS, HomePodOS, watchOS, iPadOS, and all of the OSs Apple has on offer. We talk about them, we talk about the devices connected to them, and we talk about accessories and gadgets you can get for them, apps you can download for them and all of the stuff in between. That is what iOS Today is about. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I'm Rosemary Orchard. I came prepared, Micah. Do you think I've got enough stuff? There's another two bags here on my desk. Wow. I think we're good to go, right? Yeah, you've got <laughs> bags full of goodies like Santa uh, himself. I am very impressed. Uh, this is always the time of the year when... You know, you, you maybe are thinking about some last minute gadgets, gizmos, or maybe this year has been particularly stressful and you're still thinking, uh, what should I get for this person? What should I get for this person? You know, just the other day I was uh, talking to my partner and he said, you are honestly so hard to shop for. And I said, I know, I know, I know. And he said, because if there's something that you want, you just, you get it. <laughs> and so that is exactly hard, the problem, right? Yeah. And, and that's the yeah, other thing too. So what is that what I do is I stop buying for myself in November. Like I'm not allowed ah. to buy things for myself from November onwards. And if I want stuff, then uh, my family and I, we do shared Apple notes uh, of wish list items. And so there's like generic, if somebody's looking for a stocking filler for my dad, he'd love some Guinness Zero. That's a zero alcohol one. Um, for me, there's various chocolates that I love on there and so on. And then, uh, of course, anything in particular that we are looking for this holiday season so that, you know, it may not be a complete surprise, but, you know, there's still but, plenty of yeah. ideas there for folks. Exactly. And see, the other thing is I do lots of research before I buy a thing, uh, you know, unless it's something small. I tend to do a lot of research. And so because I talk about that whenever, you know, it, when people, they, they come to me and they ask me for recommendations and then I say, oh, you should get this vacuum because of this, 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 this. So they know that I have these specifics that I pick out of these things that I like. So it can be hard too to shop for someone because you don't want to get the wrong thing, depending on what it is. It can be intimidating. So I understand why that can be difficult. And so we uh, had some different devices that we wanted to talk about today of different price points um, mm -hmm. that can perhaps inspire you or directly make you very uh, excited to get one of these uh, devices to kind of, um, you know, uh, make that person in your life that is like me, aka hard to buy for, a little easier. So uh, with that, I think uh, let's hear about your first pick, Rosemary. Well, I, I kind of started this because I had lots of ideas of things that I wanted to talk about. And, you know, I had like, you know, traditional sort of folding keyboard on my list of things that I can mention. Uh, Matthew Castanelli recommended the Hydrate Smart Smart Water Bottle. It lights up, drinks, uh, tells you how much you've drunk, all of that sort of stuff. But, you know, I think the first one on my list is going to have to be a classic. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Uh, and if you have AirPods, you love AirPods, or you just have Bluetooth headphones of any kind, you know, uh, like I've actually 
actually got a case for my Sony's here because my Sony case is where I keep my 12 South Airfly. Uh, now, there are a couple of different versions of the Airfly that you can get, but essentially this is a Bluetooth device that you plug into a headphone port, any headphone port, uh, and it will convert that stream that's coming out the headphone port into Bluetooth that's connected to your already paired to this headphones. Um, so this is great for sort of planes and things like that where, you know, you, there may be a in-seat entertainment uh, system that you want to watch, uh, but you've only got your AirPods or they're giving you the really crummy airline headphones that kind of like feel like they're about to fall apart and crackle. Uh, yeah, if you've got AirPods Pro, why wouldn't you use them? But you don't want to have to use a cable. So I have, this is the 12 South uh, Airflight Duo. Uh, but there's three models. There's the regular one, which is $35. This is the Duo, which is um, uh, $45. And then there's the Pro, which is uh, $55. So the regular is just regular. Uh, it, it just connects one, one, uh, one audio stream to one set of headphones. Uh, the Duo connects uh, your... Uh, uh, the, the stream to two different uh, kind, uh, two different headphones. So, for example, you and a partner, really useful. Um, and the Pro also adds the ability to stream music from your iPhone back into something. So, for example, if you've got a car that maybe doesn't have CarPlay or Bluetooth or anything like that, you could get the Pro and you can send music from your iPhone to your car. Pl take that out t uh, when you go on holiday. Plug it into the back of the airline seat and get the the audio from the film back into your your ears through whatever headphones you choose. Uh, so personally, I think that the Airfly is a great pick. It's also lovely for anybody who has, say, a Nintendo Switch. Uh, and yeah, you can't really easily connect regular headphones to or Bluetooth headphones to a Nintendo Switch, but you can do it with the Airfly. So definitely one of my favorite little gadgets. It's it's a it's a life hack and a gadget all built into one. I Twelve South just comes up with some really clever stuff, and uh, I can remember the Airfly being super popular amongst um, folks that I know. That again, they're very techy people, and this was kind of like a oh, I need this. And sometimes it was a oh, I didn't even think about how this would be good to have, but now that I have it, I'm so happy I do. Thank goodness somebody came up with this. So. Yeah, I, I think this is great um, and well worth checking out. And then, of course, because you've got different uh, price points, you can you know mm -hmm. get the one that makes the most sense for you. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I should go ahead. I, I just wanted to also say I've tried a couple of other cheaper ones from like Tauotronics and a couple of others, and honestly, they all kind of seem to go flaky and, and rubbish out after a while. Whereas I have to say, my this doesn't look old, but I've had this since the Duo came out. Um, and uh, it's got a thicker cable on it and stuff and nice shielding. So it's it's worth getting the 12 South one over the others. This one also charges via USB-C rather than micro USB. So it's probably a charger that you already have if you're an Apple fan. Beautiful. Um, the, the first device I want to talk about is actually also kind of an oldie, but a goodie. Um, and I actually, I just pulled it out of a, a cabinet the other day and thought, why have I not been using this? Um, it is the Doxy. I have the Doxy Q2 scanner. This is a little um, mobile scanner that is, first of all, delightfully designed. Um, it is very pretty uh, and, and rather simple to use. You can set it up um, with an app. So you can use it on your iPhone or your iPad via the app that comes with it, or rather that you download from the store. Um, and then you can connect directly to it, or you can connect it to your home Wi-Fi network. Uh, and then you can kind of access it as if it's a server on the network. So it has some different options as far as that goes. Uh, but what's so great about this is a, it's very small. Um, so it, it, you know, you could pack it in a bag if you needed to, but what I like about it is I can pull it out when I need to do some scanning, when I need to get things, um, all figured out and, and, you know, sort of digitized. But what I like is that then, you know, you can, you can easily, uh, tuck it away. So, um, with the Doxy uh, scanner, you have uh, two different built-in formats on this one. This is, the again, the Doxy Q2. Uh, you can scan in in JPEG or PDF, and you can do 300 DPI or 600 DPI. Um, the one downside to this that I found is that the onboard storage, you use an SD card, um, you can't go higher than 8 gigabytes of um for an SD at a time, or else it kind of freaks out the system. Um, so I had had 
a because again, I pulled it out, you know, from nowhere and I popped in just the nearest SD card I had that was empty and it was 32 gigs and it kept giving me a uh, this is full error. And then I remembered that a long time ago I went through the support uh, system and they told me, oh, yeah, you know, we can't support a, a card that's larger than eight gigs. But trust me, that's plenty, particularly if you're using the app or if you plug it into your computer and you're basically offloading after you get the images. Now, um, here's what's neat about this. On the back, there's a, a selection or there's a, there's a slot called direct feed. And this is meant for receipts and other tiny things, which basically lets you just feed right into here small documents. So you can easily feed uh, you know, a, a business card, an index card, something like that, if you were scanning in recipes, for example. Uh, so I'm going to turn this on and show you, um, you use the, uh, there's a little lip that sticks up on the side that you use kind of as your, um, your marking point here. And I just slide this in and then it activates and then it scans in. Now I put it in a little crooked. Uh, it does fine with that, but obviously I would try to do a better job. Great way to quickly get receipts into the system. Um, and then outside of that, I think Doxy has one of the most clever uh, document feeding uh, sort of drawers or, or, or shelves. So this folds out and then you pull up the middle and look at that. Oh, that's just so sad. It's a fidget toy built in practically. Um, so then that goes out and then you use these little lips um, on either side and they switch between letter size uh, all the way down to, I believe it's A, let's see, A6. Um, and so then you That's can feed uh, that six in there. By four. There you go. Um, so I think this thing is fantastic. Um, it's recharge. It's got a rechargeable battery in it. So you just plug it in. It, it is USB micro USB, which, you know, is sort of old school, but I really think the doxy is fantastic. And, um, for the, the geek in your life who has maybe talked about going paperless in the past, um, or, even for you know a family member who may have lots of photos or uh, recipes from you know, from their parents or whatever whomever it happens to be, uh, I think that the Doxy could be a, a good uh, get. And Doxy has recently released uh, something called the Doxy Pro, which is um, its most expensive model that has more uh, more capability than the, the the current kind of slate, but. I have found even with the smaller Doxy Q that that has been enough um, to be able to do what I need. Yeah, that's what the Doxy Pro has uh, two sided scanning. So if you want to quickly kind of scan both, whoops, both sides of a page, you're able to do that with the Doxy too. So uh, check that out as a potential option uh, for mm -hmm. a great gift. All right, moving along now, let's hear about your next pick, Rosemary. All right, actually, let's do well, your next two picks. Yeah, I was going to say the next two picks kind of come together because I feel like around the holidays is where we use our devices way more and you run out of battery and this sucks. So I have a couple of solutions. In fact, I have lots of solutions and I've given my parents some MagSafe battery packs from Anchor, but this one is my favorite Anchor MagSafe battery pack. Now, I should note, this is a pop socket Anchor battery. Okay, uh, bonus pro tip for folks, by the way, if you're using this somewhere like an airplane, print out a little sticker with like your email address on it. So if you accidentally leave it somewhere, it falls off, uh, you know, it falls out of your bag or something, then people can get in touch with you and give it back. Um, so this originally the black one comes with a black pop socket on but because it is a removable pop socket i'm not gonna be able to do this now because i'm trying to do this on air uh, you can actually swap um the pop socket there we go i might should take that one off uh and if you wanted to then bonus you can even uh maybe pop in something that is a little bit more seasonally appropriate uh if you know you celebrate christmas there are American christmas pop sockets uh whatever it is you like uh that i've got this lovely sort of galaxy nebula one um, so this one, it's quite small um, physically as well as capacity wise, uh, but it does indeed, uh, if I take the MagSafe uh, pop socket off the back of my iPhone, just pop on there and bam, start charging my phone or it would if my phone wasn't already plugged in. It recharges via USB-C at the bottom um, and it's got four little indicator lights to tell you um, 
uh, the or sorry, five indicator lights to tell you that it's charging, fully charged, or what capacity it's at. Uh, speaking of capacity, I'm just double checking because I have um, forgotten. This one is a 5,000 milliamp hour one. So this is marginally larger than the MagSafe battery pack uh, physically, but it's cheaper. Uh, it charges via USB C uh, and also uh, has like three times the capacity, which is pretty good. But if you need to charge something that's more than just your iPhone, uh, then I have to say, I'm going to recommend, and and this is the chonk, uh, this Anchor battery pack. <laughs> um, so I'm calling it the chonk because for those of you not watching the video stream, this thing is huge. I'm holding it in my hand. It is the size of like a beer can perhaps, but it's it's square. Um, uh, it has on the top, it has two USB-C ports and a, U a USB-A port. Um, and when I press the button on the side, it will actually use a little built-in display to tell me what it's at, uh, what what percentage it's at. And you can see it's at 100% because I'm going all trip later this week and this is coming with me. As you plug devices into this to uh, charge them, it will show you on that screen how much power they are drawing. Um, so if you plug, for example, your MacBook in, which you could do if you've got a MacBook uh, or another laptop, then you can actually see how much power it's drawing. I forget what the, the limit of the output is, um, but this battery pack uh, has... Um, I, I can't even remember now. It's It's got a huge uh, amount of capacity inside of it. Uh, and it's great. I am really loving this. Uh, Anchor do a couple of others in the 737 range, including ones that plug straight into the wall. I didn't get that because I travel uh, and having a plug that's for one country, especially the UK, which is huge, uh, stuck to it seemed not great. Um, but this one is um, $150 at full price. Uh, and this was $70 at full price. I'm saying at full price because Anchor products regularly go on sale on Amazon. If you have never used a great website called camelcamelcamel.com to keep track of prices of goods on Amazon, now is the time to start because you still have a bit of time left before for the holidays. Uh, if you are doing some Christmas gift giving or maybe you're doing uh, some gift giving later in the year, uh, then uh, keep an eye out and get these on sale. I think I got this one for £40, this black uh, Anchor MagSafe battery pack. Uh, it also comes in white and white with blue on the back um, as other options. This one just comes in black and silver, but it's it's got a nice sort of grain on the side. Um, so it's, it's a bit grippier. It's not just going to go flying and sliding off. Um, but two ba ba big battery packs or smaller battery packs, depending on your needs. Uh, but they are very useful. And uh, if you are going anywhere this holiday season, make sure you have a battery pack in your pocket just in case your device runs out. It doesn't matter if you're using an Android, an iPhone, or even, you know, uh, I, my grandmother's got one of those uh, flip phones uh, that's designed for uh, people who struggle with technology. Um, yeah, uh, even if you've got something like that, uh, a way to charge your phone on the go, always a good idea, just in case. You never want to be out of battery. Amen. All right. Um, let us take a quick break before we come back with loads more awesome uh, gifts in our guide for tech people in your life. Uh, I want to take a second to talk about Bitwarden. We're bringing you this episode of iOS today. If you are uh, visiting family for the holidays, might I encourage you to encourage them to get a password manager, perhaps even Bitwarden. Bitwarden is the only open source cross-platform password manager that can be used at home, at work, or on the go, and is trusted by millions. With Bitwarden, you can securely store credentials across personal and business worlds. Bitwarden recently rolled out passwordless login for the Web Vault, so now you can authenticate into the Bitwarden Web Vault using your Bitwarden mobile app instead of entering your master password. There's organization vault and login flow updates so that some organization functions where they used to be in other places have moved to improve the Web Vault UI and to accommodate new login options. The login process has been separated into two screens. Screens. There are also skim updates. So skim triggered events will now log from skim instead of unknown. And the skim API key will now be obfuscated by default. For the folks who know about all this stuff, how this works, they're going, oh, ooh, yes, finally. Oh, this is great. Uh, you can also, and I love this. This is super important. You can generate username and password uh, information from the iOS app extension. So this, when you go to log in or create an account with a new system, um, 
you want to be able to right then and there generate that username, that password, and not have to pop out of the app, go somewhere else. Well, now there's on the fly generation of usernames and passwords you can do from the iOS app extension. These are accessible from the share menu while using apps like browsers or other apps that have that share menu access available. Uh, there's a new theme for mobile. So you've got the popular solarized dark theme on mobile, uh, a directory connector. So you can uh, set up query parameters that can be used in group filters for Google Workspace. And then performance optimization. See, Bitwarden has improved web vault load times and experience for accounts with access to thousands of vault items. Bitwarden is also a must need for your business. It's fully customizable and adapts to your business needs. Their team's organization option is three bucks a month per user and their enterprise organization plan is five bucks a month per user. You can share private data securely with coworkers across departments or with the entire company. Individuals can use their basic free account forever for an unlimited number of passwords or upgrade anytime to the premium account for less than a dollar a month. Uh, the family organization option gives up to six users premium features for only $3.33 a month. At Twit, I have, we, I've certainly talked about it before, and I know many of our other hosts and producers have talked about it. We love password managers. We are fans of password managers. Bitwarden is the only open source cross-platform password manager that can be used at home, on the go, or at work, and it's trusted by millions of individuals, of teams, and organizations worldwide. So, what are you going to do? You are going to either yourself or for family members or friends, get them or you started with a free trial of a Teams or enterprise plan or get started for free across all devices as an individual user at bitwarden.com slash twit. That's bitwarden.com slash T-W-I-T. Thank you, Bitwarden, for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today and making the internet safer. We appreciate it. All right, back from the break, and I want to give a shout out to um, a gadget that I I just love, <laughs> um, and I keep coming back to no matter where I go, I return. Um, I talked before about how I had the first generation AirPods Pro, and uh, the AirPods Pro over the AirPods, the, the benefit there is that you get mostly, there are a few other things, but the, the big thing is that you get active noise cancellation. And in the first gen AirPods, there were a lot of, there's a lot of trouble where your AirPods would eventually start howling or crackling or doing all this weird kind of sound stuff that was not good. <laughs> and so I uh, stopped using my AirPods Pro because I didn't like using them as much without that noise cancellation. And so I try, you know, I used a whole bunch of different other headphones and earbuds and all that kind of stuff um, to sort of fill the gap. Well, the second gen AirPods Pro came out and I purchased a pair of those because I liked the ease of use. If somebody has an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac or any Apple device, AirPods Pro are just the easiest, best option that you can have uh, in terms of true wireless earbuds because they connect easily, they stay connected, um, they work for the, like the battery life is incredible. Uh, they charge quickly, all that stuff. Um, so I was very excited to have AirPods Pro again and knock on wood. I am hopeful that they remain, uh, steadfast and true in terms of the noise cancellation. So these are the AirPods Pro 2. Um, and I just, I use them all the time. I love these things. Uh, they, they, they work great. They sound good. And most importantly, uh, when I'm listening to an audiobook, they drown out the noise outside. Um, so I want to, I want to throw this on the list. Just even if it's just the standard AirPods, um, all the way up to the more expensive AirPods Pro, heartily uh, recommend these as a great gift. Um, there are some folks who I think are a little out of touch who would call, uh, AirPods a stocking stuffer. Um, I am not going to be out of touch on that. These are expensive. Uh, they start at $129. If that's going in your stocking, 
Well, I would like to join I mean, your Christmas celebration. <laughs> I mean, I'm also in to join that Christmas celebration, but I will say that size-wise, these look like stocking stuffers. I have both the the AirPods and AirPods Pro here um, uh, because, you know, I, I have mine on hand because I knew Micah was going to bring them up. Uh, side note, I should say that the the in-case cases that you can get from, from the Apple store for these with the little lanyards are so great. I absolutely love these. They, you know, they've got a little opening uh, at the back pointing the wrong side and and so on uh but yeah the, these are great cases um for your airpods so you know if somebody is getting airpods uh as a christmas present and you want to get them a stocking stuffer you could always get them a, a fancy case to throw their airports in and keep them nice and safe but i definitely yeah could you actually in there micah can you throw that link in um to yeah, the case that sure. you have we've talked cause... about them before they've been mm -hmm. my app cap because you recommended the lanyard as your app cap at one point and then i went and bought because you couldn't buy the lanyard anywhere i bought the cases uh which are a lovely shade of purple by the way really sort of a dark pinkish purple um but i'll make sure to get those links in the in the show notes for uh, folks if anybody is looking for those Beautiful. Yeah, those are awesome. And I love uh, the I, I've been meaning to get a case for mine because I did from Nomad have a case for my first gen AirPods Pro, uh, which, you know, it, it works quite well uh, to keep that safe. So just tucking this in my pocket sometimes i'm like oh i'm sorry i'm sorry about you uh anyway let's uh move on to the next pick which comes from rose yeah so my next pick is one i have mentioned on the show before so we'll not spend too long on it but if you are looking for something that's a little different to slash better than the max safe duo well, let me introduce you to the Mophie Trio. It's not actually called that. This is the Mophie three in one uh, wireless travel charger. So uh, it's got a watch charger here uh, and it can even uh, pop up the little watch charger part uh, so that you can use it with say uh, a link uh, band or a Milanese loop or similar, um, or you can um, flatten it and just pop, pop your watch on charge. A lovely MagSafe charger. Um, and then it's got a wireless charger over here, which I've now filed my AirPods. Uh, well done, Rose, they're right here. Um, so uh, your, your AirPods just sort of sit on there and then that can wirelessly charge them. Or you can even pop an Android on there to charge it. Um, this is a, a great little uh, thing. Uh, it comes from, you can buy it from the Apple Store. I believe you may also be able to buy it from Mophie directly. Um, but in the bag, uh, there is also, it comes in this lovely sort of uh, gray felt uh, packing case. It comes with a 20-watt uh, um, USB-C uh, plug or brick. Um, and uh, in the UK, the top prong actually folds down. So anybody who's seen our plugs or trodden on them, um, you'll know how big and bulky they are. Uh, it, it actually pops down. And it comes with a one meter USB-C to USB-C cable. Uh, you can use a lo longer USB-C to USB-C cable with this if you want, like a three meter one that I picked up off Amazon. Yes, in purple. Um, and you can actually use a different a different plug with that too if you want. But this is honestly uh, like my favorite charger for traveling places um, because you can just unroll it on your bedside cabinet and it charge all of the devices from from one brick. Um, so yeah, that's that's the Mophie three in one charger. Beautiful. Um, the next item I want to talk about. This is I will admit uh, rather pricey. But it is, you know, it has the potential for someone who's into the smart home to be very, very pumped. Um, it is a relatively new device. Uh, this comes from Level Lock, and it is called the Level Lock Plus. Now, the Level Lock already is one of the coolest, uh, I think, smart home gadgets in general, but in particular, uh, it is one of the coolest smart locks because level has figured out a design that makes it so when you are uh, installing it, you really can't tell that you've got a smart lock installed. Uh, the classic smart lock tends to have some sort of motor on the uh, outside of it, typically on the, so so when you've got a lock, it, it tends to be a deadbolt lock. So you kind of grab the little handle and you turn it and then that uh, internally forces the deadbolt into the door jam. And so then it holds the door steadfast, right? Um, or the rather the frame around the door. And 
what would happen is you would replace that part, that part that you grab onto, you would replace it with some sort of uh, circle. Uh, it tends to be like a cylinder. And it is basically kind of grasping onto the, uh, the, the, the sort of the, the part of the static um, post that's there. And then it's using the built-in motor to kind of turn and latch that deadbolt into place. So I uh, used to have, I had an, I actually still have it. I haven't installed it at my new place. Um, it's called the August smart lock and it worked great. But what I found is that anytime I had guests or, you know, occasionally I can remember I bought a washing machine and a dryer. And when the people who dropped it off uh, came into the house um, and, you know, the door was closed and they went to leave, they couldn't, they weren't sure what to do <laughs> because they just saw this big honking cylinder on the door. And they, I said, oh, you got to, because the door had relocked itself because they had been inside for a while. And I said, oh, you just got to unlock it. And then I thought, oh, they probably don't know how to. And he, the person didn't. Um, so that's the first thing I think is great about the level lock is that here you've got a lock that looks like any other lock. And so what they've done is they've sort of miniaturized the components to make the lock. And everything is built into the little area in, in between the door that, you know, that's actually in the door. Um, but what makes this the level lock plus over the level lock is that it supports Apple's new home key uh, system where you can share keys with other people that are temporary keys for them to access the home. Um, so in this case, I could, if I knew somebody was coming to stay with me, share the home key with them. And then in their wallet app, they will have this. They can just take their phone and move it up against the lock. The door will then unlock and they are able to get inside. And what I like, I didn't know that this was also an option, um, but level lock, actually, when you get the package, they send you two um, cards that work as well. So these serve as keys as well. I could place this up against the door and get inside. And that's just the nerd in me that finds that kind of cool. Cause yes, of course I could use my phone to do that, but I've also got these custom little cards that let me uh, into the door. Honestly, those are super useful to have. I have Yale locks um, and in with my car key and my house keys, like, because I, I still have a building key that I may need at some point. And then I have one of those NFC tags in my car as well. Like if my phone were out of battery and I couldn't like I, I needed another yeah. way to get into my house. It is really useful to have those. So definitely recommend setting up those NFC cards. And then just look at how simple um, everything is. I'm so used to when I've got, you know, uh, these devices, they tend to have a whole bunch of uh, huge components. This uh, little thing is what goes into the inside of the door. Um, this, of course, is the... Uh, actual door jam that um, will, or the the part that actually you know goes into uh, the the door frame and holds it there. And oh boy, now I've now I've latched it and I don't know how to unlatch it. So that'll be something I deal with later because I have not installed this yet. Um, I'm planning on doing a video review of it, so I want uh, it to be you know uh, all of the steps. Um, I'll figure out how to undo this now that I've done it. It looks there's a little screw there, so it probably is a screw that you just go. And then it unlatches is my guess. But I mean, this is the size of the box. These are the pieces that were in or the, the openings that were in there. Um, and then in here is a little battery that it takes and some screws. Uh, and I think that's it. Or maybe. Um, yeah. So batteries, screws and a oh, the 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 little thing that screws on to keep the battery in place. Um, so. For folks who've ever installed a smart lock, I know that they're out there going, really? That's all there is to this? Pretty amazing uh, little lock. And yes, again, the plus version uh, includes the ability to, um, to do uh, Apple Home Keys. Uh, Burke has asked in the chat if the lock has any special anti-picking features. Um, that is not something I have an answer to. So it's quite possible that it does. It's quite possible that it doesn't. Um, I don't know where it stands in terms of uh, its comparison to 
a normal lock that you'd buy at you know Home Depot mm -hmm. uh, and and install uh, in terms of its picking ability. So that will be a question that I will try to answer um, when I go through this. But yeah, uh, the again, I said, as I mentioned, it is uh, pricey. These start at three hundred twenty nine dollars. Um, however, that is round about the price of many uh, smart locks on the market. And mm -hmm. with just the look and feel of this thing, it's just next level. Um, yeah. And in fact, Apple does sell. Uh, it used to be that the Level Lock Plus was exclusive to the Apple online store or in person stores. Um, yeah. Level Lock has since added Level Lock Plus to other places. Yes. Uh, I do just want to quickly mention for anybody who's concerned about a smart lock being hacked um, or being picked. Um, in general, if somebody is picking your lock, you probably have bigger worries than whether or not your lock is going to keep them out. Like, why are they picking your lock? Because it locks tend to just keep honest people out. Um, and uh, honestly, I have smart locks on all of my doors here. Uh, and I'm not worried because you know what? They actually lock my doors for me instead of me going, wait, did I lock the door? And you're lying there at two o'clock in the morning and you hear a noise and you go, did I lock the door or not? I don't know. <laughs> is there is there a sound? Like, is that somebody breaking in? What's happening? Uh, you know that in my case, I lifted the handle because you have to lift the handle on, on the doors, but otherwise they don't latch properly. Um, and uh, that's it. It locks uh, automatically. So for me, having a smart lock is a heck of a lot safer. There are some reports that say that, you know, a smart lock uh, like the level could be picked in seconds, um, but most locks can be picked in seconds, to be honest, if you know what you're doing. So I wouldn't worry too much about things like that if you're, you know, looking for uh, uh, concerns about things like this. It, it's more price point on whether or not you can easily install it. And the level looks pretty good to me. Yes, very cool. Um, all right, tell me about your next pick, Rosemary. Yeah. Um, so my next pick, I've got, I've got a two for one, um, uh, Minix chargers. Uh, so Minix chargers, um, are a, a brand that's popped up relatively recently on Amazon. I think I heard about them on Cortex. Um, I've got two different ones here. Uh, I've got the, um, two, uh, three, three charger and the four charger one. Um, so the three charger one is a 66 watt charger and the four charger one is a hundred watt charger. Um, the, three charger has two USB-C and one USB-A. The other one's got three USB-C and, and one USB-A on it. But these are great uh, chargers. They're quite small uh, and compact. But what I really like about them, this one's got a, a Euro uh, head on it at the moment, but it comes with, uh, and now I have to pop it off, uh, chargers so that you, or adapters so that you can plug it into the wall in the UK, Europe, and built in is the US. Uh, so if I'm traveling to the US, I can just pop uh, off uh, whichever charger, whichever head I was using previously, and bam, I'm ready to go. Um, so uh, the the smaller one is currently um, available on Amazon for forty dollars, but I believe there was a ten or twenty percent off coupon as well, ten percent. Uh, the other one is, um, I believe, uh, sixty nine dollars uh, ninety uh, to get the slightly larger one. But they both come with European and UK uh, optional heads that you can pop on. So uh, I have those here in my uh, little Tombin travel tray, holds down the sides and then uh, pulls up the sides so that I don't get lose them. But these are some of my uh, favorite travel items. I do have one more travel item, uh, which I will be uh, mentioning as my next pick. But I think, Micah, you've got something that you wanted to mention. Yes. So this is not um, a tech device, but what it is, is a... Uh, a great pick for anybody who is technically minded. Um, I have shared, and I don't show it yet, I have shared this thing with many people uh, and almost every time anyone who's nerdy, techy, uh, geeky, whatever word you want to use, is blown away and super excited about this uh, thing. So I'm going to reach over and grab something that I'll show on camera, and then we can uh, hop over to the place. So one sec here. Uh, so what I have in my hands is a, uh, it's a, it's an artwork that says in the corner, Diagram of Dogs. And this has, uh, all of the AKC registered dog breeds, um, and they're in sort of an infograph format with uh, different categories. So you've got 
uh, working dogs, hounds, sporting dogs, toy dogs, terriers, herding dogs, and non-sporting dogs. And then those are broken up into uh, different breeds, including spaniels in general, sight hounds, uh, scent hounds, common guard dogs, American terriers, UK terriers that are then broken down into smaller categories like English terriers, Scottish terriers, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can see kind of the tree of how these different dogs uh, are are categorized. Um, so, for example, uh, uh, Chihuahua is actually in its own little category in toy dogs, uh, as are Chinese crested dogs. But there is a whole category of toy pinchers um, that includes the often pincha and the miniature pincha. Um, and then toy terriers like the toy fox terrier, the toy Manchester terrier, silky terrier, Yorkshire terrier. Um, now, let's head to the site. It's popchart.co. And popchart is this incredible uh, site that has all sorts of different infograph artwork. I have purchased uh, art from them over the course of time um, of all sorts. I used to have behind me a uh, a photo that was uh, a, it was the characters from the office, and it had not just the characters from the office, but it had all these little details. It had uh, what their nicknames are, uh, their relation to others. Um, there, if they had a character in one of Michael Scott's movies that he wrote, um, I also have one that is uh, wine that I used to have hanging in my kitchen. Um, this this is back whenever I lived in Missouri, where I had a three bedroom like large home, <laughs> versus now where uh, in California I don't have that much space, so it's not currently hanging. Uh, but it yeah, it's got different wine varietals um, as well as you know, the makeup of those I've got um, currently hanging in the kitchen is the compendious coffee chart. And this has uh, all sorts of information about coffee and different uh, brewing methods, all that kind of thing. Uh, but the site just has, I mean, so many different categories, including, I think for uh, something that some people will like, are these scratch offs. And so Depending on what you're into, there's a horror movie, national parks, essential novels, whiskey, uh, difficult novels, football stadiums, uh, cocktails. That would be a great gift for Anthony. Um, it has you know your essential cocktails, and then you scratch off uh, after you have made or tried those cocktails, depending on what you you know you're wanting to do. Um, the, the Aperol Spritz, the Bloody Mary, the Cosmopolitan, and the um, the what I love about this one specifically, and it works this way with a lot of them, is the the ink that's printed onto the scratch off part shows the ingredients, like how to make this specific cocktail, and then after you scratch it off, it shows the finished cocktail, but it still has the ingredients uh, listed in the chart, so it shows you know two. Uh, ounces of dark rum, ice cubes, 3.5 ounces of ginger beer, and a lime wedge to make a dark and stormy. Um, just brilliantly designed, uh, thoroughly researched, and beautifully printed options. And the last thing I'll say is you can also um, get them printed on, well, you can get them print as a print that gets shipped kind of in a tube. But they also have some options like mounting it on a panel um, or getting it inside of a black frame. So you can choose which one works for you uh, to, to kind of uh, fill your home how you want to. So very cool stuff. And I, I just had to give a shout out. If you're looking kind of, this is especially like a last minute gift. Um, this could be a great gift for someone to add some art to their home. And they all just look so beautiful that they, they look mm -hmm. great. I think in any, um, any, uh, decor, but, uh, really yeah. great for like an office or something. No, I, I really want superpowers now, Micah. It's got a really great sort of comic book vibe to it. it it's really cool. I love that. Um, all right, let us take a, uh, another quick break before we come back and round out our uh, holiday gift guide. 
Uh, I want to tell you about the next sponsor. And hey, this is potentially another great gift for that techie person in your life, or just that person who's talking about how they don't get great sleep and wish that they were getting better sleep. They can do so with Eight Sleep, who are, of course, bringing you this episode of iOS today. This holiday season, you out there can give the never ending gift of deeper sleep to yourself or to someone else. Consistent good sleep is so important because it can help reduce the likelihood of serious health issues. Uh, it can decrease the risk of heart disease. It can lower blood pressure. It can even reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. Yet still more than 30%, 30% of Americans struggle with sleep and feeling hot at night is one of the main causes of poor sleep. And it's in fact, the main cause for me for sure at night is feeling poor, uh, is, is feeling way too hot. I would wake up in the middle of the night, sweaty, have to get up and uh, cool off, cool down. In some cases, towel off, which is just horrifying thinking about it now. With eight sleep, this thermoregulation that takes place, I've got the, uh, they sent me the eight sleep pod, uh, the cover that goes over your, your mattress and it regulates your temperature over the course of the night. And it has made all the difference in my life in terms of my sleep, which of course, by making a difference in my sleep, it is making a difference in the rest of my life. I'm falling asleep in record time faster than I ever have before. And it's all thanks to the eight sleep pod. Uh, I remember looking a few times in at the at the data. I don't do that a whole lot uh, these days because it can kind of add to uh, the anxiety of getting good sleep. But when I when I did look at the data, kind of after I first got it, I thought, no way! It only took me that long to fall asleep. It, it just just thinking about how long it used to take me, and then of course waking up in the middle of the night is just such a different thing. Uh, the Eight Sleep Pod is a tech layer that fits onto your mattress like a fitted sheet. The pod dynamically cools and heats each side of the bed to maintain the optimal sleeping temperature for what your body needs. With the pod, you can start sleeping as cool as fifty five degrees Fahrenheit or as hot as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And the result is that clinical data shows eight sleep users experience up to 34% more deep sleep. With more deep sleep, what does that mean? Well, it means that you can be confident that your mind, your body are moving through the restorative sleep stages. These are the stages of sleep that are so important for physical recovery, for hormone regulation, and for mental clarity. This isn't a holiday miracle, even though it might sound like one. If better sleep is on your wish list or the wish list of a loved one, uh, look no further than the new Pod 3. Go to 8sleep.com slash iOS for exclusive holiday savings and ring in the most wonderful time of night. Uh, 8 Sleep currently ships within the USA, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU, and Australia. That's 8sleep.com slash iOS. If you're listening after December 31st, use the same URL, 8sleep.com slash iOS to check out the pod cover and save $150 at checkout with the normal offer. Thank you so much, 8sleep, for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. Now back to the show. Well, uh, I I have another charger. Um, so uh, somebody in the chat room, uh, Polar Font, uh, great name, by the way, uh, said, you know, if you keep buying USB-C chargers, does that actually negate the benefit of not getting USB-C chargers um, with uh, or chargers in general with your devices? Maybe, maybe not. But I should say I do share with my parents. And this is another USB-C charger. This is one with a bit of a difference. OK, so um, folks may have, um, you know, tried various different charges before with multiple ports on the side and so on. And I find when I'm traveling, I tend to need more than one charger. You know, I need the one that will be by the side of the bed. Uh, and then I need the one that's going to be like on the desk area or something for charging my laptop and iPad and things like that. Um, and so uh, this is my my second uh, charger. So this is the fledging spruce. Um, and this uh, on the top, it's got a nice shiny sort of mirror finish actually a wireless charger. It's a wireless charger, however, that also uh, uh, pops up into a little stand. So you've got a stand for your phone that can charge your phone whilst, uh, you know, you, you're looking at it. And then on the side, it's got three USB-C ports and a USB-A port. But one of my favorite little tricks about this, um, or two actually, is number one, it takes a standard C7 cable. That's that sort of figure eight loop. Um, so you can just, you know, use a European, UK, US, Australia, uh, whatever version of that you need. But on the bottom, it actually tells you in detail when you're plugging all the devices into the different ports, what combinations are there which will give you how much output. OK, so if you plug things into all four ports, um, then uh, you would get, uh, let me see, 
um, 36 watts out of each of the USB-C chargers, um, for example, or if you use um, two of the the USB-C uh, chargers, um, then you can actually get 130 watts of power output. Um, so there is uh, a lot to like about this little uh, guy. Uh, it also came in a nice little sort of uh, velvety pouch, um, which is great uh, so that you can, you know, throw it in your luggage and not worry about that shiny top getting scratched. Uh, but uh, this is something I actually heard about on an episode of Mac Voices that I was on talking about uh, gift guides. Uh, so uh, I'm really glad I did because this is coming with me when I go to Budapest later this week. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. You can pick this up on Amazon or directly uh, from Fledging um, themselves. Um, and uh, it comes in uh, white, black, uh, or space gray. Um, it is $125, uh, but you can get it on sale uh, at points. So worth keeping an eye out for those sales. Uh, and uh, yeah, another great charger option. And I'm afraid I've got one more charger in the bag. Uh, literally, Micah, it, it, it's it's in this bag. Um, but uh, I think you have uh, a really lovely recommendation for us, don't you? Yes, uh, my last pick today. Um, again, another pricey one, but I think something that is um, a really good idea that I've been waiting to see done well. Um, I so. Over many, many years, I've been a fan of the Kindle. Um, I remember the the best gift that I ever got at Christmas time. Um, I we grew up, you know, uh, relatively uh, poor, and I and in terms of finances, I don't mean I had a poor childhood or anything like that, uh, but financially. And I remember asking, kind of, as it was a moonshot. Uh, for a Kindle, because I thought Kindles were so cool. This e-ink, this carrying multiple books with you. Um, and at the time, it was the Kindle keyboard. Uh, and I just thought it was the most amazing thing. And so I remember asking for one. And then on Christmas Day, uh, unwrapping packages, and I came across this smaller package. I opened it up, and inside is this Kindle. And I'm just blown away. So awesome. So excited. Um and I still have that Kindle to this day. I occasionally have to buy new batteries, a new battery for it from iFixit because <laughs> uh, the battery get, goes bad. Uh, and then I bought, uh, between then and now, I bought a, Ken, a Kindle um, that was a little bit more modern. And it's whenever they used to have like the magnesium back on them. Um, and that one was good, but it didn't just have the magic that that original one did for me. Uh, and just recently, Amazon announced the Kindle Scribe, uh, which is a Kindle, still e-ink, but with the ability to write uh, with the device. And I happen to have one here. Uh, so this is the Kindle Scribe. It comes with a loop for uh, the pen. And you are able to uh, use the Kindle to actually uh, write. So I could pop this open and uh, tap on this notebook. And here I've got a grid paper that I could then write on. And so this is great if you're wanting to, for example, uh, take notes and have it feel more like a classic uh, notebook. But it's also great for being able to mark up PDFs or uh, in the case of, of books that you might have, if you're wanting to take notes with them or on them. And uh, I've used some of the other options in the past. Uh, Leo Laporte, uh, let me borrow his uh, Remarkable, which is a pretty popular um, e-ink display that you can write with, or write on rather. And I found myself not using it as much as I had wanted to. And I think the big thing was the fact that so many of the books that I've purchased are in the Kindle store. And so being able to have those Kindle books in the same place um, as you know the note taking that I'm doing, all of that together, I think is what really makes that click. So this is a little bit because of Amazon's walled garden and its uh, DRM stuff that's in place with its eBooks. But frankly, it worked on me um, because I, I've got, I'm reading through a uh, book about shell scripting right now. And being able to take notes right there as I'm reading through the book has been really delightful. Uh, this These start at $340, so really pricey. Um, but understanding that price point um, 
it is, you know, it's an e-ink display and it is uh, going to be uh, on the pricier side because, let me see, I'm trying to see the Remarkable 2. Uh, yeah, so the Remarkable 2, do you have to have a Foley? It's saying, let's see. Um, yeah, the Remarkable 2 is about $400. Um, let me configure my own remarkable. So let me do it at the, the cheapest price where you, you, of course you need the pen, uh, what do they call the marker? Um, so I will do the least expensive pen and then I will do the, um, no folio. So no cover on it. And then I will add that to the cart. Yes. So that is $378 before tax, um, versus, the 349 i think i said for the um kindle scribe so a little uh less expensive than the uh, other kind of well known one uh, other well known display on the market and so yeah if you're in the market for something like this it is still um sort of new technology in terms of uh market interest in it and also capabilities but what i've found with it is that it is incredibly responsive. Um, that's been the biggest kind of shocker for me is I'm used to an e-ink display taking a while to kind of refresh. But this, I really feel like I can just write away and it uh, follows along with what I'm doing. And I also like that it appears to um, maybe even better than, I know this is weird to say, but better than the iPad uh, match my handwriting uh, when it's doing its sort of predictive algorithm to figure out where my pen is going to go next. Um, I find the iPad can tend to sort of correct and smooth out lettering or writing in a way that uh, this does not. And I like that because it feels more like I am in control and I'm writing with it. So yeah, it's a really cool device, still kind of experimental, but um, if you've if you've got the money and you are looking for kind of a really, really neat a uh, gift for someone who you know takes a lot of notes or um, wants to, or who who's a huge fan of the Kindle and you kind of been going, hmm, is this uh, something worth checking out? I think it's definitely worth it. It's a really, really cool device. All right, uh, Rose, why don't you round us out on our um, holiday gift guide here? Uh, yeah, so uh, my last one, it's a charger, but it's a charger for at home, uh, maybe for your bedside cabinet, because this is the Moco. This is the five in one magnetic uh, charger, but there's also a four in one and three in one and a various number of other ones that they do. Um, and uh, this one works quite nicely. It's got a 15 watt magnetic charger here. So your iPhone, uh, she says, popping the pop socket off the back of it, just sort of <laughs> and it sits there your apple watch can sit over here and then there's a space here for the for the airpods uh and at the back there's a usb a port so if you've got to say a kindle and you you want to have a cable hanging around plug that in you can do that but what's really great is the fact that the back of this is white now that seems a little weird but um i i'm going to try and hold this in front of the camera so that hopefully you will see there we go uh so this is actually uh, a light so there's a little button on the front here which has got a little light on it um and you can actually um you know tap it and increase the amount of brightness that you're getting out of it and then uh turn it all the way back off so this is great to have like by the side of your bed maybe you've got some guests coming over this holiday season you know that they've they've gone all apple this year or something and just in case they forget a charger or you want to give them something super cool cool on the bedside table and then steal it and stick it in your office, um, then you can pick up one of these guys. Uh, the This one, I believe, is uh, $32.59 uh, on Amazon at the moment. I'm pretty certain I picked this up for about £25 on Amazon at some point. Uh, but, you know, AirPods, watch, uh, phone and spare USB port as well. Um, and uh, there's light a light built into the back of some of them all sorts of options. Um, so yeah, take a look at the Moco chargers. Um, and also, if maybe you've gifted somebody an AirTag or a couple of AirTags, pack of AirTags, uh, maybe you lost holiday season, might be a nice idea to get them some CR2032 batteries without a bitterant coating as a stocking stuffer for this year, because their AirTag batteries are probably about to start running low. And this way you can have uh, saved the day when they inevitably ask, hey, wait, wait, so uh, it says that the battery in my AirTag is like running low. Like, what do I do? How do I how do I fix this? Uh, you can you can run in and save the day, help them get the present out their stocking, open it and uh, replace those AirTag batteries so that none of their stuff gets lost. 
Beautiful. All right, folks, I hope you have been inspired uh, or you got an idea for a last minute gift. If there was something uh, that, you know, you were still going, ah, oh, what, what is it that I want to get this person? Uh, the, the techie people in your life that you might struggle with. Um, well, hopefully some of these options will work for you. And of course, let us know uh, what gifts uh, have made your list this year. What things had you excited uh, to give to others or maybe that are on the list for yourself that you've said, hey, I'd really like it if uh, you, got, you got me this. Uh, we'd love to hear that. All right, moving along to the news. The first uh, bit of news that I wanted to talk about is that soon all new iPhones will have to be USB-C. Tell us more about that, because um, although you are not part of the EU, um, I assume this will affect you still, Rosemary, correct? Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's going to affect me because uh, over here we we tend to sh send share the same sort of uh, radio frequencies and so on with Europe, you know, having been part of the European Union for so long, uh, you know, old habits die hard and changing <laughs> uh, things is difficult. And the EU has officially said that starting December 2024, or I believe it is, um, all new uh, iPhones uh, and indeed devices will have to be sold with USB-C. Uh, devices is the important one. So it means that things like uh, Kindles will also have to be USB-C. Uh, most of those have already started moving over, but there's, there's a lot of micro USB gadgets out there on Amazon that you can pick up. Uh, so basically, uh, next year possibly will be the last year that the iPhone is lightning, at the very least in Europe. Um, now, I should say that Apple does actually produce multiple different versions of the iPhone. I previously had a Hong Kong iPhone, uh, which I bought because it had two physical SIM card slots. Uh, but unlike the Chinese iPhone, which also had two physical SIM card slots, did not have the modified for China version of iOS on it. Um, they, the version that they produce for the US is slightly different due to the um, carrier waves and so on involved uh, over there. So I'd, it's possible, I guess, that it may be that you get USB-C in Europe and you get lightning everywhere else. Who knows? Uh, that said, personally, I'm going all in on MagSafe charging. But if you're thinking of picking up a bunch of I uh, lightning cables for folks uh, this year, uh, then uh, maybe, you know, think about whether or not you can get them on sale. Uh, that they're not going to be useless just yet, uh, especially things like AirPods um, will probably not get changed as frequently as your iPhone. But, you know, you, you're probably not going to want to stock up on lightning cables right now. All right. Um, then we've got uh, upcoming a new firmware update for AirTag. Um, this, you know, Apple on occasion announce or releases some firmware updates for different devices uh, that you kind of don't get to see uh, sort of what they do <laughs> exactly. Sometimes when AirPods get firmware updates, they're also kind of obscure. Um, you can't force an AirTag update. So if you see these headlines talking about how AirTags are getting a firmware update uh, and you go, oh, I want to make this happen, there's not a way to do that. So when the AirTag is in range of your iPhone, uh, it will at some point update when it has that connection in place. So the best thing you can do to make sure that the update at some point happens is to have uh, you know batteries that have juice in them still inside of your AirTags and mm -hmm. then have them near your iPhone for an extended period of time. Uh, that's the most you'll be able to do to make that happen. But you are able to check the firmware version. You just open the Find My application. Uh, you choose the Items tab. Uh, this is from 9to5Mac. You choose the Items tab. Uh, then you find the AirTag in the list of items, tap on the AirTag, and then you will see some information, including the serial number of your AirTag and the firmware version of your AirTag. So you'll be able to see if it has the 2.0.36 uh, firmware update for your AirTags. And then uh, tell us about uh, Emergency SOS. It's, it's coming to more places, yeah? Yeah. Um, so I have emergency SOS. I can go ahead and set up to get help during an emergency. Uh, Mike, you did this on the show. Was it last week or the week before when it rolled out in the US? I, I don't remember. I think a couple but of weeks either way, ago. It, it, yeah. 
yeah, it was it was very recently. Um, so I'm not going to go through setting that up uh, now. But if you are in uh, the UK, France, Germany and Ireland or Ireland, um, then you can go ahead and set up emergency SOS on an iPhone uh, 14 model, uh, 14, 14 Pro, 14 large. I've forgotten the naming. Um, <laughs> Pro, Pro, Max. Pro Max is definitely the 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 Pro the the large size of the Pro. Um, you can do that. I'm not doing that because we're live on air right now. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's certainly um, something that is really good uh, to see, and hopefully it will be rolling out in more countries in the not too distant future. I'm really curious. I'm going to enable this, and then I'm going to Budapest this weekend. So I'm curious to see. Like if I can see something that says like, hey, emergency SOS is not active here because obviously it's not yet rolled out in Hungary. So uh, I'll have to report back next Tuesday, Micah. Please do. All right, folks, I can hear the sound of the music. It's time for Shortcuts Corner. This is Shortcuts Corner. This is the part of the show where you write in with shortcuts requests and Rosemary Orchard, the shortcuts expert, provides a response. We've got a great big Shortcuts Corner uh, from Kevin. Uh, so let us work through this. All right. Hi again, Rosemary and Micah. Hello, Kevin. Uh, you two have the best show on the Twit Network all, and that's an incredibly high bar. Also, Dan Morin and Matthew Casanelli are fantastic guests, too. Thank you for all your efforts. That's so sweet. Um, firstly, uh, the pet tax. We don't have pets, so hopefully our mermaids, Jessica and uh, Linnea, uh, or snowmen, might work instead. We had some very unseasonable snow yesterday in Cheltenham, UK. The, and You'll have to tell me if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Rosemary. You are. And the girls, thank you. Yes. And the girls loved having an early white Christmas without needing to get back to Wisconsin for it. Now, to protect the, um, we're, we're going to, we'll, we'll not show the mermaids, but we will show these uh, snow people that they made. Look at that. Uh, so they made these delightful, they're actually taller than I know. Um, Jessica and Linnea. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not very far away from Cheltenham and we had quite a bit of snow here too. And my upstairs neighbor made a snow bear. So cute. So cute. And also uh, the mermaid picture, they had absolutely adorable tails, purple tails um, and so on. But yeah, privacy of children, we're, we're not going to show that one on air just in case. Don't want to get anybody in trouble. Can you show uh, the snowman, the one on the left, Kevin, can we zoom in on that? Because looks i can't tell if it's like a bouffant on its head or what's going on there but it I is think there might be a hat amazing i think that could yeah, be is a that some sort snow of hat? top hat i love that see it's like half snow top hat or it could be um Elvis i Cliff. just i'm thinking of like yes yes exactly a lot of hairspray went into the making of that hair it's so good oh i love it uh, all right here we go so thank you for paying the tax uh kevin now uh rosemary will be able to answer your question <clears throat> second Thanks for reading my Money Whiz review and all the help you've given me in listening to all your tips. So um, I think this has been many an episode ago, uh, but Kevin had written in about uh, an app, right? Or a service that uh, mm -hmm. Kevin was using called Money Whiz. Uh, do, yeah, do you have more about that? Uh, I don't remember the the episode exactly, but Kevin's written in a couple of times um, and uh, it's always great to hear from you, Kevin. Uh, so thanks. And thank you for sending us your review of Money Whiz. I know I've given the app a try, and I'm pretty certain it was thanks to your review. Awesome. All right. Finally, my question. And here we go. Buckle in. I'm very much struggling to get my home automation for our bathroom to work as intended. Our bathroom has four Hue GU10 light bulbs, a Hue motion sensor. Wow, four lights in the bathroom. A Hue motion sensor, a Hue four button switch to control the lights, a Hue one button switch to control the fan, a two speed fan hooked up to two Lutron switches, a towel rail controlled by an Another Lutron switch. I'm assuming this is one of those towel rails that are heated. Uh, mm -hmm. Very bougie. And an OnViz humidity sensor. Now, here is what Kevin would like to have happen. One, when someone walks into the bathroom, Hue will turn on the lights in the Hue app. This currently works. And set the fan to slow unless it's already on high. This currently works. Two, when motion stops in the bathroom for 10 minutes, Hue will turn off the lights. This currently works. And as long as humidity is less than 50%, the fan will turn off. This is currently not working. Three, when someone presses the fan, this is the single Hue button, the fan should switch to high speed 
and the light in the notch, this is a little alcove in the shower, will change colors, indicating it's in high speed. It also has assigned colors for low speed, various registered humidity levels, and is off when the fan is off. I'm waiting on setting this up until I can get the humidity and motion functionality to work. Four, as humidity levels move up or down, the color of the notch light should change to indicate it rising or lowering by indicating which humidity band, this is according to an assigned color, the room is in and the high speed fan should be switched on until it lowers to normal room humidity, a little less than 50% most of the time for this room. This all was mostly working for a while, but I've regressed a bit on it. And five, I'd like the towel rail to be turned on whenever the humidity level goes high enough to start the high speed fan and stay on for one hour after the humidity is lowered back down. Turning on works, but I'm not sure how to turn it off an hour after the humidity lowers. Since this is lower priority than getting the humidity and motion to work, I can live with what I have now of turning off when the humidity lowers. So we're going to pause uh, for the first kind of response to this. Rosemary, good luck. Well, I'm actually going to start at the bottom because turning the towel rail on and then turning it off um, an hour later is actually possibly the easiest thing to do. I'm going to start with that just because I have a feeling that there's there's going to be a lot of people out there who want something to like turn on for like an hour or 10 minutes and so on, especially around the holidays. You know, there's lots of things like that, especially if it's a bit chilly, maybe where you are, you've got a little heater that you want to turn on, but only have it turn on for 10 minutes. So in the home app, uh, which I'm just popping up on my screen for those of you watching the video, if you tap on the plus uh, and then you add an automation, um, then you can have uh, whatever it is doing whatever trigger you need. So it could be that somebody arrives home uh, and my iPhone turns invisible, or it could be that, uh, there it is, um, or it could be something else. So um, I'm just going to try and use um, the uh, uh, me arriving home as um, an automation. Okay, so I'm going to say anybody arrives at any time. Um, and um, then um, you can use a scene um, or you can turn on a switch. I have a number of switches called scenes here for, for a couple of reasons. But I'm just going to say I'm going to turn on my living room lights, okay, when um, I arrive home. And then right here at the bottom, this is, this is the bit that you want. Turn it off, you tap on that never, and then you scroll down, and then there's after one hour. And that's it. That's simple. So your towel rail turns on and then an hour later, it'll just turn off again. And I think that that is going to be the simplest solution to that. Um, so that makes that bit nice and simple. Um, and you can use this for a number of devices. Uh, and it also has making my iPhone turn invisible again uh, when I save it. So there we go. <laughs> um, now on to the slightly more complicated one of um, specifically, you've got the um, Lights turning off automatically after 10 minutes of no motion, but the fan isn't turning off if it's um, if the humidity is less than 50%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this automation that I've just made, okay? And then um, when you uh, go into the uh, scenes and accessories section and the setting there, you can tap convert to shortcut. And this is something that you will want to do if you've not already done it. Um, now done that or you've started by creating this in in the home app uh, in the shortcuts app um, then you'll have something that looks like this now this isn't full shortcuts this is a mini version of shortcuts because it's just stuff that can run on a home pod but what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add an if statement okay and then we're going to select uh, an accessory i'm going to select uh, actually my bathroom humidity level because i actually have a humidity sensor uh, in my bathroom, which is not showing up here. So that's fine. I will pick uh, the one, fingers crossed, in my office. Uh, there we go. Uh, my bedroom is uh, perhaps better. Um, and do we have humidity? We don't have humidity. So I'll, I'll use uh, temperature because that, that's a, a reasonable proxy. So I've got my bedroom temperature sensor here. And then you, you can um, select the current temperature of it or um, there may be other things that you can select. So if you're using a hue motion sensor, those do have temperature sensors. You can actually get the temperature from that. Um, and then you can tap on the condition and then you can say is less than or equal to. Um, now in your case, um, Kevin, it's going to pop up with a percent symbol. In my case, it's popped up with degrees Celsius because I'm using metric. Um, and so um, you can pick something. So I'm going to say if it's less than uh, 21 degrees, which is nice and toasty indoors, um, I just remove this otherwise. And then what we need to do 
is we need to look and there is an action in the home app where you can use the control um, and it'll have the name of your home in there. And then you can just say, okay, in that case, I want to, um, and I am going to say, close the curtains. Um, and I will just uh, set that to that. And then this will do, it will um, turn off uh, your lights as it was previously doing. That's that first action. We haven't done anything to that. That'll do exactly what it did before. And then if the fan is less than 50%, uh, sorry, if the humidity is less than 50%, it will turn off the fan, assuming that you've, you've set the fan up there. Um, and then when you tap the next, um, it will just uh, show you that you've got uh, a shortcut and the the icon of the first thing or things you're controlling. Um, and um, now in this case, because I'd, I have had the turn off there, um, I'm actually going to change that to never because you probably don't want to um, undo the turning off of the lights and the turning off of the fan uh, when uh, things uh, get changed. Um, so with that done, um, I think we have covered um, most of this. The tricky bit is going to be the light uh, and the light color in the alcove. Um, now, I should mention, if you want to do really nerdy automation, uh, Home Assistant is a great solution for this because it can do all sorts of great nerdy things. But instead, I'm just going to start in the Shortcuts app and I'll um, tap Create a Home Automation. You can see I've got a choice of two homes there. Even though I have three, um, that's fine. Um, and then we're going to use the sensor to detect something as our trigger. Ah, there we go. I have uh, humidity in my living room. So I'm going to use the humidity as the example. Um, and um, now you're going to actually probably want to create multiple different um, uh, options here um, because this is something that's actually quite tricky to do. Um, at least in HomeKit, because as the temp as the humidity goes up, you'll also need to create a mirror automation for your humidity going back down. Okay, so I am going to say uh, when the humidity rises above eighty percent, and so you'll have to create one for um, drops below eighty percent. Um, then I am going to um, I'm going to pick uh, a light, and I will see if I can pick uh, one of the fancy lights behind me. There we go. That's the the one right over my shoulder. Um, and then um, I can change this um, to uh, different colors. Um, so if I set that one to red, um, then uh, that would be that. So it would set it to, to red. Now, the, the trick with this is you're going to have to create a lot of these, or you're going to have to use a lot of time-based triggers to check the humidity level and then use if statements um, to figure it out in shortcuts. It's going to be tricky. I am 100% certain though, Kevin, that you can do this. Uh, you sent us a little picture of all the hardware that's involved, uh, which is pretty cool um, so that you've got all of that stuff set up. But I think uh, with a couple of little tricks like that, you are pretty much 95%, 99% maybe done. And maybe you'll have some time over the holidays to uh, spend a little bit of time doing some more things. So uh, if, if you're watching the video, you can see on the left, we've got a, a hue uh, motion sensor. We've got one button, which is labeled for the fan. Um, and then we've got a, a four button hue switch, which has got a, a power um, and it, it's got dimmer options and a hue button at the bottom, but you can program those to do whatever you like. And there's also an onvis sensor, which can do motion, but Kevin is just using this to detect, um, I believe, temperature and humidity um, is what it reports as well. I have teeny tiny little car sensors to do that in most of my rooms, uh, but this is a, a pretty cool setup and there's some pretty good options there. Uh, but that is not the the end of Kevin's question, uh, I believe, uh, Mike. That is correct. There, there's a little bit more. All right, so here we go. I have found that Hue and their lighting do a far better job of detecting motion and lack of motion than the OnViz sensor, so I only use that sensor for humidity. Okay, first of all, I want to confirm, yes, uh, the Hue motion sensor has long been uh, my recommendation for the best motion sensor that you can get. Uh, the Hue app also does a better job at motion than Apple's Home app. So on the Apple Home, uh, than, the, than Apple's Home app. Um, I watch for turning on and off of one of the bathroom. Oh, I see. So let me try this again. The Hue app also does a better job at motion than Apple's Home app. So on the Apple Home side, I watch for the turning on and off of one of the bathroom lights instead of looking for motion or no motion in my scripts. I keep getting close to having I keep getting close to having all this interaction work, but I'm missing something. And at the moment, the fan turns off when I run the 
hey, you know who, fan off shortcut, but not from within my maybe overly complex scripts. I haven't found a way to step through my code or much in the line of debugging, so I feel I'm working a bit blind in finding my faulty code. I moved the notch light out of the bathroom uh, so that it is controlled separately from the rest of the bathroom lights. I also, mm -hmm. oh wait, let me stop there. Yeah, separately from the rest of the bathroom lights. Yeah, I, that's something I really recommend. Uh, I have lights in my wardrobe. They are smart lights uh, and I have little uh, sensors on the door. So when any of the doors open, the lights and all the wardrobes come on. Um, and uh, if I say, you know, hey, Apple lady, hey, HomePod lady, turn off the bedroom lights. I don't necessarily want the lights in my wardrobe to turn off because they're just controlled by the doors. Um, so uh, it's definitely worth moving those. Also, similarly, if I turn off the lights in my office, I don't want my little Christmas tree, which is there. There it is um, to turn off uh, or my snowflakes. Those those need to stay on. So, uh, yeah, well worth looking at making uh, fake rooms for some of these things. And that that's definitely uh, worth uh, looking at using a light for a proxy as well. Great trick. Definitely recommend that for folks. You know, if something if the light turns on reliably, you can either use, um, you know, the thing that turns the light on to run the next one um, or, um, you know, the light turning on as your trigger. Figuring out what's going wrong, I'm afraid, is just going to be a case of probably convert your automation into a shortcut and use get contents of URL to ping something. For example, um, I would personally use Pushcut Automation Server because you can copy the URL for a notification. Um, uh, and so you can just pop that into the get contents of URL to send you a, send you a notification that this thing happened or that thing happened. But this is this is just unfortunately the downside of HomeKit automations. Uh, Home Assistant is a lot easier for things like this. It actually has traces, which is one of the reasons why I've moved most of my stuff into Home uh, Home Assistant. I still have control through HomeKit, but uh, I've ended up going uh, going a little nerdier there than perhaps everybody else wants to. But it works for me. Uh, then we've got, I also use the controller app and subscribe to the lifetime plan. Thank you, Rosemary, for that tip. It is a fantastic app, but I can't say I'm proficient in it. I would also love to understand how to use it to take backups of my configuration so I don't, don't lose everything in a future outage. Ah, uh, yes, this is great because the controller app is superb for making sure that your home kind of looks the same after you're done. Uh, but how does uh, Kevin go about backing up the smart home configuration? Uh, well, this is something that's built into the, the controller uh, for HomeKit app. There's also a couple of other apps. Uh, Home Plus um, is another one that can do this. But um, so here I'm in the controller app. Uh, if you tap on the home, then you can see various settings. And if you've got multiple homes, you can switch between them. Um, but under the backup section, this is where you can go ahead and just tap create a backup. Now, I very deliberately uninstalled and then reinstalled the app for this so that folks uh, can see. So the app is uh, free to download and, and try out. And then there is a, a $24.99 a year uh, subscription option, which is family shared. OK, so if you've got uh, an Apple family set up, then, then you can use this um, across everybody. And there's also uh, that lifetime option that Kevin mentioned there, which uh, is $54.99 over here in the UK. I believe it's uh, $59.99 in US dollars. Um, but again, this one is family shared. Um, so once you've done that and you've got your backup, you'll you'll see. Um, I I actually do use this more often than than it looks like here. Um, but when when you've got a backup, you can actually restore it, and then you can assign accessories if things have changed. So for example, if I swap my overhead light bulb here, um, which I did, I swapped from just a white one to a white ambience one that changed the device in HomeKit and I needed to restore it so that everything worked the same way. So I was able to link that up in controller for HomeKit and just say, okay, that light bulb is now this light bulb. Um, and then everything just magically worked and kept going, which is perfect. Awesome. Uh, and then last but not least, Kevin says, I also love the iConnect Hue app, which gives us lovely animations. It is fun to play lighting engineer with when the girls have a production on our little makeshift mezzanine stage. All, But I've not figured out yet how to save a few animations in the home app and use them with button presses and timed scenes. I think I'm close, but currently lose the automation on them and just get a static light arrangement when played through the home app. So iConnect Hue apparently has some fun animations, um, although to get those animations to work by way of the home app is not easy. 
Yeah. Um, and so I redownloaded the app and, and was playing with this a little bit earlier. Um, and then I reinstalled several apps in advance of the show and accidentally uninstalled I Connect Q. Uh, oh, no. And so now I have a, a really fun bug in iOS 16.2, uh, which is just rolling out where I can't actually download apps from the App Store until I restart my phone. So I'm going to have to come back to you on that one next week, uh, Kevin. But I have a feeling from memory uh, that... Um, it doesn't integrate with the home app and home scenes. Um, what you'll need to do is use shortcut actions uh, to do this. And that shortcuts in the full sense of shortcuts, not shortcuts in the home kit sense of shortcuts. So uh, I, I'm afraid it's not going to be quite uh, as home kit streamlined as you might like, but it's certainly automatable. There you go. All right. Uh, with that, it is time for our app caps. This is the part of the show where we place caps atop our heads to honor our app or gadget picks of the week. These are the apps and gadgets we are using now that we want to share with all of you because we think they're great. And it, just to show how committed we are to the greatness of these apps and gadgets, we put things on our heads. Uh, this week, I am wearing a classic Santa hat, uh, the large white brim of the cap with uh, the red pointed thing that, uh, that sticks over the top. And then, of course, the little white um, snowball at the end of it. Uh, and my app pick of the week is one that I've actually meant to talk about before, but had completely spaced on. Um, it is a fantastic app for folks, uh, especially now, who are starting to get cards for the holidays. It's sort of this um, this this thing that you have in your heart <laughs> uh, where you get these beautiful, wonderful, amazing cards, but everybody only has so much space. And when you only have so much space, you ask yourself, do I keep these cards? Do I throw away these cards? Do I uh, begrudgingly uh, place them in places where I know I don't have room, but I feel like I need them. And then the magic of having these cards that I originally had now makes me sad because or uh, upset because I don't have space for them and yet I keep keeping them. You know, not speaking from any personal experience. Um, so there's an app that has come along to try and simplify uh, this for us and make it a little bit easier. And it's called Hello There. Um, Hello There is available for free to download. Uh, it does have some in-app purchases. There's a 99 cents a month, $7.99 a year, or $20 one-time purchase that lets you uh, create multiple folders within the app and do a few other things. But the point of this app is to collect and organize the cards that you get. So um, I have my uh, Hello There app open, and you can see I've got uh, an occasion for anniversary. I'm going to add an occasion for thank yous. So I will tap there and I will type in thank you as the category. And then you have the option to add a featured image. So I'm going to search online for the word thank you and see what pops up. So look, there's a thank you card, in fact. I will uh, download that image and make that the featured image. And then I can choose a theme. Um, now, I don't have the pro version, I guess, unlocked on this. I thought I did. But um, in any case, I can choose one of the colors that's available. So I'll choose this orange. I will tap done. And now I've got this folder. When I tap into thank you, now it's time to add uh, a card. So it says tap the plus at the top of your screen to start adding thank you cards. So I'll tap plus. And I will add a description. And in this case, I will um, dictate this out. Uh, a thank you card from my sister in response to a baby shower gift, period. So there, now that's the description. Um, from the someone, you can add a new sender. Uh, so I will enter a name. Um, and I'm just going to put her first name for now. Actually, I'll do her first name and a period for her last name. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could add a photo there. I won't for now, uh, but I will choose uh, Shaylee. And then the date upon which it was sent, which I do not recall uh, when that was, but we'll say 
um, October. It was definitely in October. We'll just go with October 10th for now. And then you add your photos. Now, there are, of course, are different kinds of cards. So you may have a uh, sort of landscape or uh, portrait card. This is a more landscape card. And then you add the images. So you have some options here. You could pull out that um, thing I showed you earlier, which was the uh, doxy, and you can scan it in, um, or you can just take a photo with the camera. So I'm going to give access to the camera, and I will quickly take a photo of the front of the card, like so. And I'll use that photo. Uh, so then I've got it there. I could also choose from the library if I wanted to. Um, then, and so, so you see here, this is where the, the pro comes into place. Um, you can do four images per card if you get the pro version, whereas with the, um, current version, uh, you just get one. So let me go ahead and subscribe right quick. Uh, so there's the front of the card. Now I want to add a photo of the, um, inside of the card and take a photo of that. Um, and then I can take a photo of the back of the card. Of course, if you wanted to, you could do uh, all four pieces of the card, but I'm just doing the three uh, so that it's got all of those. Although it's not letting me, I wonder what's going on there. I'm gonna tap done. So let's see. Aha, I got my first card, yay. Uh, so let me tap back into that and then let's see if I can edit it. Okay. So there's the first, there are the first two photos. There we go. Now I'll add the third photo, which is just the back of the card. Um, and again, I, I personally, when I'm using this for real, um, will pop these into the scanner and have them show up that way. So, uh, that way I can see kind of more clearly. And th this is kind of neat too. There's a little zoom effect. So it zooms in on kind of the card itself. Um, and so there's the thank you card. Now, these of course can all be stored here. Uh, so you can see them. And if you look in the top left, there's a little uh, stats section. So it uses the um, new charts feature that is built into iOS and iPadOS to kind of show you uh, the cards that you've gotten over the past year or so. Uh, you can set up different favorites. So you can choose which ones you like the most, um, you know, create new folders how you want. Uh, this is kind of neat too. Uh, this setting toggles live text for card images on supported devices. So that way you are um, able to set, you can actually uh, search these cards for the text. So if there was a card that you got at one point and go, oh, uh, what was that about? You can use that live text feature to do so. And then you can also uh, allow the cards to be cropped after you take the photos. Um, set up the senders that you have in here. Of course, uh, themes. So right now I've got the custom app or the, the uh, default app icon, um, the wallpaper that's in the background of the page. And then um, if you have colors for the folders as well, uh, as well as some other sections, including language. Um, if you want, I kind of like this, you can set up um, a secure with uh, touch ID option. So that way, you know, you can keep that stuff kind of locked in. And then the ability to uh, have the app notify you about other apps that the developer is creating or not, um, with some information, of course, about how this all works and uh, which version of it of the app you're using. So that, friends, is hello there. A really neat app for holding on to cards. And a shout out to the developer who made this, uh, reached out to us many moons ago and said, hey, uh, you might like this app. And I said, I absolutely do like this app. And then I completely forgot to talk about it. So uh, last week we covered stuff that you sent in the mail. The developer reached out again to say, you might check out uh, Hello There. And I went, oh my goodness, I remember you. So I had to pop it in uh, because... I wanted to talk about it then, and it is a really cool app. Um, and goodness gracious, does it make me feel so much better? Because uh, I've got cards on cards on cards going back quite a bit of time that just are somewhere tucked away. And now they don't have to be tucked away. I can scroll through them anytime I want to here in uh, on my iPad or uh, even you know on other devices as well. So that's hello there. Um, and now, Rosemary, tell us about the cap atop your head 
and tell us about your app pick. All right. I had to peek out to see whether or not I was on screen because I can't actually see with my app cap correctly in place. So uh, I am currently wearing a Stitch onesie uh, because I thought today was onesie day at work. Turns out onesie day at work is actually next Tuesday. So I turned up pre onesie and I was the only one wearing a onesie. Now, because I have the, the slight visual problem, I have a, a backup app cap. I have a, a knit cap. It's got a little pom pom on top and then it's got a second pom pom because so it's cute. on Santa's hat. Uh, so I've got a little Father Christmas. There's a Christmas tree. Sorry, there's a chimney there with some snowflakes and stuff. Um, and this is much more practical than the stitch onesie because I can actually see, which is quite useful. Um, so my app cap is an app that we have talked about before here on the show. Um, and it is a great app for uh, letting you uh, apparently appear twice phone. Uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> keep track of all of your different lists of things you want to watch, games you want to play, apps you want to check out, um, you know, all of all of the good stuff, books you want to read, etc. Um, so Sofa is a free app to download. Um, and uh, it, it's great. We've, we've talked about it before because it's got all the different lists um, where you can create things. So if I tap on the plus button, which I've got here uh, on my iPhone, uh, then you can see that you can create, uh, you know, different kinds of lists um, and you can also add different kinds of items. So if I wanted to, um, for example, to add a board game, then I could type uh, in uh, Happy Salmon, which I saw somebody get at um, uh, Secret Santa last week that I organized at work. And so I can just add that. And now I can add this specifically uh, to the pile, which is the unorganized like inbox, essentially, of all of the things um, that you, you want to look at. Um, I can log this to an activity, say that I've played this, for example. Um, or I can add this to apps to check out, books to read, games to play, movies and shows to watch, and iOS games, which are my personal lists that I've created. So I'm actually going to add this to games to play because I think that playing Happy Salmon sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but uh, the big reason why I want to talk about this is Sofa 3.4 is out. Um, and so this is a pretty big update because it now has shared lists. Um, so uh, oops, uh, I'm actually just going to tap and create uh, an, a new list. Uh, I'm just going to call this iOS today because, you know, that's that's what uh, you do when you're uh, demoing something on iOS today, you call it iOS today. So when you get confused later, you remember. Uh, if I had groups for my lists, I could pop it in a group. Um, but now within this, I can tap on the plus button and you can see this this particular part is still in beta. Um, and then if, if you join the beta, then you you actually get to, to share this with other people. Um, and then I can go ahead and I could send this, for example, to Micah or I could send it to my mom um, or I could share it to apparently the Home Assistant Discord or something that is being recommended to me. Um, I, I won't do any of those right now, but the fact that you can now have a shared list, I think solves one of the the big things that a lot of people have. I know, Micah, you and your partner uh, have uh, shared lists of things that you've somehow discovered that the other person's never seen um, yeah. and been stunned by. Uh, you know, you can now have a pretty shared list in Sofa. Um, so it's also now got shortcut support. Yay, uh, making me much happier. Um, and lock screen widgets um, so that you will be able to see on your lock screen what, what show is up next to be watched and so on. And honestly, for me, this is uh, helping solve problems. I, I need to go through and add um, movies and shows to watch in the actual movies and shows to watch folder. You can tell that I was playing with this earlier and I, I renamed my uh, Nintendo Switch games uh, to make it look like I, I had movies and TV shows to watch because I've recently run out of uh, my, my last TV show that I was watching. So I, I needed to pick something. Good news is I, I have found something, but I feel like I, I probably ought to have a list, you know, a platform agnostic list. So it's not just what's in Netflix in my watch later list, what's in Plex in my watch list, what's in uh, Apple TV, Apple TV Plus, um, and then like the Amazon Prime app. No, I should have one centralized list with all the stuff in. And then as a bonus, um, there is also now a uh, movie and TV show uh, watch providers so that you can actually, um, you know, find, um, you know, where you can watch something, um, which is great. Just Watch also exists, but the fact that it's built in now into this. So um, I was actually, I've started watching Jack Ryan because uh, that seemed uh, like a fun thing to do. So uh, there we go. I can add this to the, I'll put it in the movies and TV shows to watch. But now if I, if I tap on this one, um, then um, you'll actually see that I can see where I can enjoy this. And this is tailored 
locally as well, um, integrated through Just Watch, which is just perfect. Cherry on top of the cake. So great job to the Sofa developer here, a uh, feature that I really love. Um, Sofa is uh, $3.99 a year or $35.99 a year for a personal plan, or there is also a family plan option, um, which you can then share with your family. There is also, I should know, a lifetime option um, that you can uh, sign up for. Um, so um, you, you can you can do that if you you prefer. Um, and uh, I believe I would have to change my plan, unfortunately, to show you exactly what options there are. But uh, I'm currently enjoying Sofa on the personal level, but I'm planning on getting my parents onto it this holiday season because I have a feeling that they are actually going to really enjoy it. Indeed, I I imagine they will. Um, well, folks, that brings us to the end of this episode of iOS Today. If you have questions, feedback, uh, shortcuts, corner requests, all that jazz, you can send those to iOS Today at twit.tv. Uh, if you'd like to tune in to watch the show live as we record it every Tuesday, well, you do that at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live, which you can do across all sorts of uh, streaming platforms. But the best way to get the show, we feel, is by subscribing or following, which you do by going to twit.tv slash iOS. There, you will find a button that says subscribe to audio or subscribe to video, which will, of course, let you subscribe via audio or subscribe via video. Uh, if you would like to get all of our shows ad-free and also help support the Twit Network and make all of the stuff we do uh, happen, well, there is a way for you to do that. It's called Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit. Starting at seven bucks a month or $84 a year, you out there can join the club and you get so much for joining the club. First, you get every single show ad free because instead of sponsors supporting the show, it is you supporting the show. So you get that trade off. You also get access to the Twit Plus bonus feed that has extra content you won't find anywhere else behind the scenes, before the show, after the show. Lots of great stuff there as well as access to the members-only Discord server. That is a fun place to go to chat with your fellow Club Twit members and also those of us here at Twit. Super easy to use. Uh, and there are loads of different channels where you can talk about specific topics. And you'll see lots of people hopping in there, having conversations. Uh, and it just starts with all of those things. You also get access to the Untitled Linux Show, uh, which is a show all about Linux for you Linux fans out there. Hands on Windows, which is Paul Thorat's short format show all about the Windows platform and how you can use it and, uh, you know, make the most of those Windows devices. And my show, Hands on Mac, which is all about Apple devices, not just the Mac, but the iPhone, the iPad. Uh, I've got tips and tricks about all that jazz. So much fun uh, and all available as part of your Club Twit subscription. Pretty wild uh, how much you get for that subscription. And of course, we thank you in return for your help in making these shows possible. Um, if folks want to follow you online, Rosemary, and check out all the great work you do, where should they go to do so? Well, the best place to go is rosemaryorchard.com, which has links to all the places you can find me online, uh, including uh, Rosemary Orchard on micro.blog and Twitter and Rosemary Orchard at snailedit.social. But you can also find me in our Club Twit Discord, um, where, you know, I get to hang out with some really cool folks. Um, and also, uh, I am currently in the process of uh, setting up a little iOS Today uh, account on twit.social. So if you've got feedback for the show, not right as this show releases, but hopefully soon after, you'll be able to toot at us as well as tweet at us or email us to get us some feedback. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Micah, where can folks find you? You can find me online at Micah Sargent on many a social media network, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee, that's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to the places I'm most active online. So a great place to click. Um, you can catch me on Thursdays on Tech News Weekly with Jason Howell, on Saturdays for now uh, with Leo Laporte for the Tech Guy radio show, though in the new year it will uh, be Sundays. And, oh, of course, uh, on Thursdays uh, in the afternoons, Hands on Mac, if you are a Club Twit subscriber. So please check out all of those shows as well. Thank you so much. I hope that you've been inspired and that you now have the gift and gadget that you need for your uh, loved one who is all about uh, tech. Thank you for tuning in. And we will catch you again next week for the last um the last 
uh, live show, I guess we'll say, of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, because of after that will be our best ofs episode. So uh, see you then and uh, talk soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that, too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. <laughs>